Hey, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to be answering a question from the old specification, the C12 October 2020 paper. Now, this old specification here, it is um, something C12 has questions from the P1 syllabus, also from the P2 syllabus. Right now, I'm just collecting questions together after I've finished answering all the up uh, latest P1 papers. I'm finding some questions related to P1 um, for extra practice for, for, you know, for you guys, things that are related to what we're going to face maybe in P1. So this is one of the type of questions from the chapter of indices and thirds. Um, so we'll go through this question. Um, part one here, we're told, given that a to the power of y over 4 to the power of 2x equals root 2 over 32 find y in terms of x giving your answer in simplest form and when it says find y in terms of x you have to end up with something that says y equals and then there's going to be x's in the answer somewhere there'll be x in the answer so y equals something x that's what they want they want y as a subject in terms of x all right so what we have to do basically here we see y and x are both in the index so you have to think about how to deal with this um, in terms of indices. Now, in P1, we haven't studied logarithms, all right? In P2, we start logarithms. So th the intention is for you not to use logarithms, although if you did, you would, you would, I guess, get the marks. However, it's much easier to actually do this without using logarithms, okay? Because you've got these exponents as well, which are, you know, not, um, um, you know, numbers, but it's, it's easier for you. I mean, I guess equally is easy, but I'm going to show you how to do this using the way that is intended in the question as we haven't up to p1 we didn't take logarithms all right now all of these numbers in p1 all of these numbers you'll realize you can express them with the same base and that's the key here where what we're basically doing is kind of like solving an exponential equation that's what we're doing and exponential equations are solved by making the base numbers the same and if you notice eight four 32 and root 2 all of them can be expressed as 2 to the power of something so i know that 8 is the same as 2 cubed and i know that um, 4 is the same as 2 squared and i also know that um, 32 is the same as 2 to the power of 5 i also know that the square root of 2 is 2 to the power of a half all right these are all you know we should know how to convert these or not we should understand how to make these into um all of them two to the power of something if you didn't know you could just use your calculator okay you could just use your calculator and just you know you realize it's going to be eight and four you should understand that's going to be two to the power of something if you weren't sure about 32 you could say all right let's just try two to the power of four to the power of five you'll end up eventually with 32 so you can just do some guessing and checking in case you forget you don't realize all right so now all of them can be expressed as two to the power of something so that's what i'm going to do here so instead of eight to the power of y i'm going to express this as two cubed to the power of y instead of four to the power of two x that's two squared to the power of two x instead of two to the power well, instead of root two that's two to the power of a half and instead of 32 that's two to the power of five Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the law, laws of indices that we should know that when you raise something to a power, to another power, you multiply those powers together. That's a to the power of m times n. That's one of the laws of indices we should know. And we can understand that, for example, if I, if I uh, took an example, for example, 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4, for example. What this, in essence, means, it means 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3, multiplied by 2 to the power of 3, multiplied by 2 to the power of 3. So you're going to have like 2 times 2 times 2, and then another one, then another one, that's four of them all together, so that's going to be 2 to the power of 12. Okay, so it's like the same thing as just multiplying these two powers together. All right, so this is going to be expressed as 2 to the power of 3y divided by 2 to the power of 4x, just multiplying them together, and I can leave it like this for now, 2 to the power of a half over 2 to the power of 5, okay? So, I mean, there's multiple ways of doing the of continuing from here. I could say, all right, these are the same power, uh, um, the same basis is like 2 to the power of something divided by 2 to the power of something. And as we know, a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is the same as a to the power of m minus n. 
you subtract the powers. When you're dividing two numbers in index form, you subtract the powers. So I could write this as 2 to the power of 3y minus 4x equals, and I can write this as 2 to the power of a half minus 5. Okay? And this gives you... Now, once you have... Let me just simplify that first. 3y minus 4x is equal to... Now, a half minus 5, well, that's 1 over 2 minus 10 over 2, which is 2 to the power of minus... 9 over 2. Okay, that's 1 over 2 minus 10 over 2. Yep, okay. So now, once you have... Oops, this is 2, not 3. Am I right? 3, 4. 2 to the power. Sorry about that. Okay, now, once you have expressed them as with the same base, so you have 2 to the power of something equals 2 to the power of something. Okay, that's the, that was our objective, to solve this equation, to basically make the bases the same if I know that 2 to the power of something is the same as 2 to the power of something, those two things must be the same. If I know, for example, 2 to the power of P equals 2 to the power of Q, then P and Q must be the same because these things are both equal to each other. So whatever's in the index must be the same. So 3y minus 4x equals negative 9 over 2. Okay, now I don't want to have a fraction here, so let me multiply everything by 2. So I have 6y minus 8x equals negative 9. So now I can um, add 8x to both sides. So 6y equals 8x minus 9. And then I can divide both sides by 6 to make myself get y as the subject. So y is equal to 8x minus 9 divided by 6. And there's the answer to this question. If you wrote them as separate fractions, you could. That would be 8 over 6, which would be 4 over 3x, minus 9 over 6, which would be 3 over 2. Okay, you could write them as separate fractions, but I think this is better. Um, and there's the answer to part one of this question. Okay, so um, the, the key to answering such questions is to make the bases the same. Okay, make the bases the same. So you'll notice in P1, you'll always be able to make the bases the same. These are all two to the power of something. You know, sometimes you might have threes, nines, 27s, 81s, for example, and you'll notice that you can make all of them three to the power of something. Sometimes you might get a big number, and you can use trial and error to find out what power of that base is going to give you that number. Okay, so there's part one of this question. Now, part two is also related to the same topic of indices and thirds, so I'm going to just answer this um, alongside. Now, part two says, solve the equation x to the power of root three equals four times root two plus x. Now, a lot of students, they look at something like this and they get afraid. Oh, what do we do here? It's like root three root. It looks like a bit alien to them, especially when they first start doing P1. All right. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of here. This is just a simple equation. Root 3 is just a number. It has a particular value, which just happens to be an irrational number. So if I find the square root of 3, it's just a constant. All right. If I, if I round it, I have to write it as 1.73 if I round, round it. Okay. So this is just like saying 1.73x. And, and this is 4 times 1.14, whatever it is, 1.41. Uh, Okay, but we don't want to round them because we want to leave things in exact form. We have to write the answer when we solve the equation. When first of all, solving the equation, have you must have x equals something. So we have to find end up with x equals something, and the answer must be in this form, where you have something times root something plus something times root something else, where all of them have to be integers. Okay, so now, um, as I said, there's nothing to be afraid of. An equation like x times root 3 equals 4 times root 2 plus x is no difference in essence to an equation such as, like I'll just, I'm going to do the put a little side, side thing here just so that you can see. Um, this is not the question that's being asked, it's a completely different question, but I want to show you how similar it is. Supposing we had, for example, 3x is equal to 4 plus x, right? If I gave you this equation to solve, you would say, hold on, am I doing A-level maths? I'm doing AS maths. This is like grade four stuff, even grade four, grade five stuff. Right? Everyone knows how to solve an equation like this. You know that you have to bring the x's on one side of the equation and the other side should be for the numbers. So you've got to subtract x from both sides. So you've got three x minus x equals four. Now, this is in, its sense, in essence the same thing. You have a number times x equals a number plus x. So what you've got to do is you've got to make one side for the x's. So if I subtract x from both sides, I'll have x times root 3 minus x equals 4 root 2. This side for the x's, this side for the numbers, just like we did there. 
Now, in this case, we can subtract these two. So 3x minus, 2x, uh, minus x gives us 2x. So 2x equals 4. That's the next step here. Now, I could, if I wanted to, find what root 3 is, 1.7, whatever it is, and subtract um, 1x from that. But that will not give my answer in exact form. I want my answer in third form. So that won't help me if I round the root 3. Okay, so what I can do is something slightly different, which could be understood here as well. What I could do is I can take x out as a common factor of these two terms. So I can say this is like x times and have root 3 minus 1. This is the same as that, and that's equal to 4 root 2. It's basically, we could have done that here, but there's no need to because they're like, you know, they're like terms, the exact integer numbers. But you could write this as x times 3 minus 1 equals 4. That's the same thing, isn't it, right? 3 times 3x minus x. All right, and 3 minus 1 is 2, you'll get that anyway. But of course, that's a bit of a weird way of answering such a question. You just subtract them. But here, because we want to keep things exact, we take x as a common factor. Now, we want to make x a subject. Now, if I take 2x equals 4, I want to make x a subject. I divide both sides by whatever is multiplying the x. So divide this side by 2, divide this side by 2. I'm left, I'm left with x equals 2. And there's a solution. That is not our question. That's a different question. I'm just showing you how similar this is to this in terms of the method that you use to solve it. All right, so here you have something, root 3 minus 1, it's a number times x equals 4 root t, 2. So what I've got to do is got to divide both sides by this number. So if I divide this side by root 3 minus 1, they cancel out. And if I divide that side by root 3 minus 1, I'm left with 4 root 2 over root 3 minus 1. Now, that is the answer in terms of we've made x a subject. However, it's not expressed in this form. Now, to express it in this form, what we have to do is what's called rationalize the denominator. Now, this question very clearly states in the beginning, in this question, you must show all stages of your working solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. So what you can't do here in this question, what you cannot do here in this question is take your calculator and just type in this into your calculator. You cannot just say uh, 4 root 2 over and then root 3 minus 1. All right? That is the correct solution. But if I just wrote that down as my answer, I'm going to definitely lose marks because they want to, you to show how you rationalize the denominator. That's why it's got that statement there in the beginning of the question. So you must show how to rationalize the denominator. Now, rationalizing the denominator is getting rid of the irrational terms in the denominator. And irrational terms are the square roots of non-square numbers, like this root 3. So we want to get rid of this root 3 from the denominator. Now, if the denominator is made up of, for example, if it was just, for example, supposing it was 4 root 2 over root 3. To get rid of this root 3, we would multiply the denominator and the numerator by just root 3. And then you'd end up with 4 times root 6 over 3 times 3, which is uh, um, root 3 times root 3, which is 3. When you multiply root of something times itself, you just get rid of the square root. It's like, it's like you know, it's basically the square root of 3 squared, which they cancel out. Right? So that's, if it was just root 3 in the denominator, that's how we would rationalize it. But it's not just root 3. It's root 3 minus 1. So what we've got to do is we've got to take this and you've got to multiply it by what will eliminate this third from it. And what, what will eliminate it is what's called its conjugate, which is the same two terms, but with the opposite sign between them. It becomes almost like a difference of two squares. Like if I do root 3 times root 3, that's going to give me 3. If I do root 3 times 1, it's going to give me root 3. Then I have minus root 3, minus 1 times root 3, which is minus root 3. So that root 3 and the minus root 3 will cancel out. And then I'll have minus 1 times 1, which is negative 1, thereby getting rid of the, 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 the search from the denominator, rationalizing the denominator. But if I take this and just multiply the denominator by this, I've changed the fraction. So I have to multiply the numerator by exactly the same thing that I multiplied the denominator by. That will keep this the same value as a fraction, but it will eliminate the third. It's just rewriting it in a different form with the same value, but the denominator will be now rationalized. So if I um, multiply this out, I'll have root 3 times root 3, which is 3. And as I said, the middle term will disappear. So I'll end up with 3 minus 1, because you'll have 1 times minus 1 at the end. So you'll have root 3 minus root 3 that goes. Now that's rationalized. It's going to be a, a, a number without a third in it. 
And the denominator will be 4 root 2 times root 3. So that's going to give you 4 root 6. Okay, because when you have root A times root B, it's the same as root of AB. Okay, that's one of the rules we should know of indices, of third, sorry. Okay, you multiply them separately, you can multiply, you can find, you can put the square root of the whole product of those two. Okay, so that's 4 times root 6, then 4 root 2 times 1 is 4 root 2. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's just simplify this, so you have 4 root 6. In fact, um, I'm going to take out the common factor of, uh, let's see, this is 4 root 6 plus 4 root 2. Yeah, I can take out the common factor of 4, so I'm left with 4 root 6 plus root 2, and then 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, so I've just factorized this, and I've, multiplied, I've subtracted those two. The 2 cancels with the 4, so you're left with x equals 2 times um, root 6 plus root 2. Now, they want the answer in a particular format where it's not, like, factorized, so we're going to take, we're going to just expand the bracket, so x equals 2 times root 6 plus 2 times root 2. And if we go back to what we got on the calculator, when we first did this, you've got exactly the same thing. So we have got the answer, but those steps are essential for you to show. All right, don't just, if you just write the answer, you will lose the marks for this. Okay, so make sure you show your steps very clearly. That's how we rationalize the denominator. Okay, so it's very important that you show those steps in such a question. Using your calculator to make sure you haven't made a mistake is very good. So, for example, somebody might have um, wrote plus here and a minus here by mistake. Just write the wrong sign. Or just, you know, when you write the, when you write the plus sign, you, you might put one line and the other line you forgot to put it or whatever. Um, in the end, you can see, ah, oh, why does it say minus in my answer and it's plus there? Then you can say, ah, oh, I, I, I wrote plus there and I, I wrote minus there for some reason. I didn't copy it properly. So you can use a calculator. It's a very useful tool for you to see if you made a silly mistake and to make sure and to rest assured in your heart that you've done the question correct in the exam. But you can't just write down the answer in this case, cases like this. Very, very important. Okay, now I apologize if I've spent a long time explaining this question. All right, um, a lot of, well, not a lot. I mean, I get um, some people commenting that, oh, sir, you know, why are you spending so much time explaining? Uh, you know, we just want to know what the answer is and, you know, you're wasting time and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Just get to the point, uh, why, did you, why did you talk for so long, whatever. All right, now, the point is, if you just want to know what the answer is, you could go to the mark scheme and just look at the mark scheme. All right, that's no problem. Um, that's fine. And you can see if you got the right answer. My, the whole um, intention behind these videos <coughs> is to help students who have, are having problems in class, who need some extra help, who need some explanations, that's my original intention, intention for this, for my students that I teach in school. But well, since I started uploading in YouTube, I found that you know a lot of people are watching the videos from different parts of the world, whatever. Some some students don't have teachers, or they're homeschooled, or some students they don't understand very well in class, or due, due to COVID or whatever, whatever happened, uh, you know, in, in the last few years. So a lot of students need some explanation of what's going on. So that's why I use this as an opportunity to explain things in a bit more detail uh, to help people with the basics all right so that's the reason why i go into a bit more detail because um, it's not just about um, the mark schemes um, and finding the answers it's about how to get there and a few tips that you might need for for the exam anyway so that's the end of this question which is question number four from the c12 october 2020 paper now i will collect together all the questions from this particular paper in the playlist that i will put somewhere in this area over here. And I will collect together this particular topic, okay, um, in this um, playlist over here, for this is going to be SIRS and Indices. I'll also label the video with what it's from, whether it's from P1 or P2. Okay, so um, I'll label it with whether it's from P1 or P2 work. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking over here. Thank you for watching. Check out the links in the description to find um, you know, links to other material for, for, you know, for my IG, my AS, my A2 material, uh, you might find useful and you can share with your friends those links. Thank you for watching and see you soon.